Welcome to the SNN Network Canada virtual event. I'd like to introduce our next pre presenter, William Trainer, CEO and President of Vicente Motor Corp. William, the floor is yours. Thank you and good morning, everybody. Today I'm going to present to you Vicinity Motor Corp. We are a uh, vehicle transportation manufacturer. Um, we have started off with uh, clean CNG um, and diesel buses, and we've transitioned uh, very well into the uh, electric vehicle platform. Um, we have world-class partners. We have uh, vehicle manufacturing availability uh, in Washington State that'll just be coming online, and vehicle electric vehicle manufacturing uh, in Elkhart, Indiana. We have, uh, on the EV segment, we have what, uh, what we consider our vicinity lightning, which is really a uh, new mid-size purpose-built electric vehicle. We have the optimal uh, uh, VMC optimal S1 and E1. Uh, the E1 is a strip chassis and the S1 is a, is a low floor shuttle. We have our VMC 1200, which is a recently launched uh, class three industrial electric uh, vehicle. And it competes in a marketplace with over 400,000 vehicles sold annually. We have some very strong uh, collaboration agreements. Uh, one with the EAVX group, the uh, Point Dexter Strategic Collaboration. Uh, we'll be providing and supplying uh, chassis for their next generation delivery vehicles. We have very, very strong uh, growth for 2022. Our growth forecast for 2022, we're forecasting $140 million in revenue with a minimum of $10 million adjusted EBITDA. And for that, we'll be, we'll be delivering about 70% EV vehicles throughout uh, 2022. We've got our existing models, which will still be some, uh, uh, delivering some vicinity classic vehicles uh, for orders that we're still fulfilling. Um, we have 75 vicinity lightnings, over 200 uh, VMC 1200 trucks, over 300 electric shuttles uh, with, the, with our VMC optimal. And these, uh, these forecasts represent a 300% increase over our projected 2021 revenues and incorporates uh, all of the streams that uh, we're forecasting here, which really gives us some very good accelerated growth for 2022 and well into 2023. Our electric vehicle lineup. So we've got buses and shuttles. I'll get into each one as we go through the uh, presentation deck here, but uh, just a quick introduction of it. The VMC Optimal S1 is really about a 24 passenger seated electric low floor shuttle bus. It's the, um, the very first electric low floor shuttle bus in, in that segment. And then we have our vicinity lightning, our 28 foot um, uh, vehicle. And then of course we'll be developing our heavy duty vehicles as, as we go forward. Um, we really wanna position ourselves to really control that mid-size vehicle market um, um, and below. Uh, and I think with these lineup of vehicles, we're extremely well positioned. We also, as we're, as we have our um, electric bus uh, segment, we also have um, what we consider a, the, the chassis, truck and chassis. And this is very significant because this plays very well with our collaboration agreements that we have with the, uh, with the uh, Point Dexter uh, group. Um, we have the, our Class 3 medium-duty VMC 1200 electric truck. This truck will be produced down in Washington State at our Ferndale location. Um, it has a, a very good price point coming to market. It's a 12,000-pound GVWR, and it really competes in an addressable market of over 400,000 uh, vehicles. We developed this vehicle much in line with what our um, shuttle, uh, with our but in the Lightning uh, platform, use a lot of the same components. And then of course we have a class four vehicle, which is our VMC Optimal E1. And this is really what it comes into a stripped down uh, version that we call it. 
Um, this is really, you know, it uh, fits into, um, you could put a shuttle bus on the back of it, you could put a work truck, uh, RVs, deliveries, and, and various things like that. That vehicle uh, is really a um, Ford E450 that's converted down at our Elkhart, uh, Indiana uh, location with our uh, joint venture with, with Optimal. And then also what's quite exciting is what we've done is we've offered a, a, a VMC what we say class five to six, and this is a 22,500 GVWR uh, platform. Um, when we developed our, our uh, bus, the uh, vicinity Lightning, um, we wanted to actually take, if you can imagine, just take the bus body off of it and offer this as a stripped down chassis as well. And this is really quite exciting because as I walk through the deck, uh, I'll show you where it, it fits in, in the marketplace, but it's a, um, it's a hydraulic brake uh, class five six uh, chassis that uh, we really think is going to do well in, in, in the market. We still have our existing uh, uh, ICE vehicles, which is internal combustion engine vehicles. As we transition through, you know, there's a lot of customers that are still out there that are that are transitioning and aren't quite ready for the electric vehicles, and this is where this fits uh, extremely uh, well. shows our flagship vehicle where we started off. We started off uh, in this segment, this mid-size segment. It's really what we're focused on, where we want to really uh, uh, build our relationships and uh, build our customer base and really compete strongly and actually dominate this, uh, this mid-size market. And this is uh, one of our existing vehicles that, uh, that we had uh, uh, developed. Uh, it's done extremely well. We have over 800 of these vehicles on the road today. Um, it, it allows for a lot of um, uh, parts business. We have a lot of reoccurring parts businesses coming in from this existing vehicle. And this is what we say, you know, we're, we're transitioning into the electric vehicle, and this vehicle is still available for those that, uh, that really can't um, start the transition. Now, this is, this is the vicinity lightning. This, this vehicle took us uh, over a couple of years to develop. Um, it's really our flagship of, of the uh, mid-size vehicles, and it, it really is positioned to compete in this mid-size market, and, and it competes extremely well. What I'd like to say is we brought this vehicle to market really to address all of the, uh, the complete market segment. When we look at the market segment in, in uh, North America, it is, uh, it is really too... Um, We've got two segments of it. We've got what we call the uh, the um, private side, and then we have the public side. And on the uh, public side, we see an awful lot of funding coming through right now, uh, government funding availability for those vehicles. But there's also the private side, and there's not as much funding that's coming through with the infrastructure funding uh, really in North America uh, for the for the private side. And this is where we developed this vehicle really to fit that marketplace. So we, we developed it to come to market at a price point that makes sense. It comes in at about 350 to 400,000 US dollars. We see our competitors coming in and offering the same size, mid-size vehicle for six to 700,000 dollars. And you'd have to say, you know, how did we get to that price point? Well, when we developed this vehicle, we really looked for proven automotive technology. And when I say that, um, when you look at the automotive industry in general, when they bring a vehicle to life, they bring a vehicle and they really look for, for bringing out a million, um, a million vehicles in that model range. And when you do that, you, you get your uh, infrastructure and your parts business and your industry behind building the products and building the components to fit that, uh, that vehicle. And that, that brings the pricing down. So the volume in the, um, uh, of the automotive industry with the high quality, high volume parts and pieces brings the price point down. And that's what we wanted to really focus on. When we looked at you know, who was leading the industry in the, in the um, car uh, electric uh, vehicles, it's really you know, Tesla started off and they're um, uh, leading that industry. And, and you gotta look at why are they so successful? And what we thought or what we've seen is that when a car in the automotive industry sold, it's it sold with a plug. So you can actually buy that vehicle, take it home, 
and you can plug it in without with very little infrastructure uh, add-ons to a, a, to your standard power grid, uh, which is 240 volt single phase power. So that's what we wanted to follow that uh, that automotive design technology, and to do so, we had to develop the brains and the hearts of the vehicle, and that's your your power distribution unit and your vehicle control unit. We built that in house, um, and that allowed us to to actually go out and source these automotive components to get this vehicle to come in at at, at what we consider to be the best price for the for the marketplace. And when I say the best price, when we look at our competitors coming in at six to seven hundred thousand, this vehicle coming in at say three to four, three hundred and fifty to four hundred thousand dollars, it makes sense for a private operator to look at this and say, okay, I can buy a diesel bus for two hundred and fifty or three hundred thousand dollars. So for no more than about a hundred thousand dollars increase, you can actually buy an electric vehicle. And when you take the life expectancy of this vehicle, you know, total cost of ownership over a eight or 10 year period, you actually save a considerable amount of money. So we say that our vehicle coming to life is really the first one that can come in there and actually do a business case and make sense that uh, that the private operator really needs to, to buy this vehicle and, and save money. Now we've done, a, we, we offered a lot more um, technology on our vehicle than we, than we when we see uh, our competitors. So the first thing that we wanted to do is we wanted to incorporate a battery pack that fit into the low floor section of the bus. So our batteries are 400 volt uh, single phase charged power. And I, like I said earlier, that, that is really key to allow you to go in and charge this vehicle in, in the standard power grid. The competitors coming out with six to 700 or 800 volt technology, most of those batteries have to be charged with three phase power. So we have a big advantage here uh, with our uh, single phase power. We put an onboard charger on it, so you don't have to buy expensive infrastructure to charge this vehicle. It charges overnight on a six to seven hour charge and then comes out and can do, depending on the selection of battery packs you put in it, but do 250 miles on a single charge. And that's more than ample for most of the, uh, most of the uh, uh, operators out there. The other thing that we did is we incorporated the batteries into the low floor section of the bus. We see our competitors putting in um, the commercial grade batteries and they're, they're a lot thicker. They're usually 12 to 14 inches uh, thick. Well, you can't put that in the low floor section of the bus and our competitors are putting the batteries on top of the roof, which makes for a very top heavy and not a very uh, uh, good ride vehicle. The other thing that we did with ours, we wanted to keep it down in a class five, six vehicle uh, classification, which is 22,500 GVWR. And the reason for that was we went out and we sourced standard um, hydraulic brakes that you'd use on a school bus. And this again comes to uh, ease of use for the, um, uh, for the operator. Uh, we see our competitors coming out with, uh, with air brakes on their same size vehicles and the operator would have to have a commercial air brake ticket to drive the vehicle. So we really think we've packaged up what we, what we see as the best technology in the vehicle at, at the best price point coming in there. And that's why you know, we really see this vehicle is dominating that mid-size uh, vehicle market and below. Now the VMC 1200 was really born out of, we looked at our we looked at our market space and looked at the technology that we'd actually developed on on the uh, on our uh, vicinity lightning, and we thought, how can we take that same you know next generation EV engineering and put it into a, a vehicle that that uh, uh, made sense? So we put it on this small vehicle. Uh, we designed um, and we'll uh, manufacture this small VMC 1200 vehicle. Um, it again, you know, has an onboard charger. It has ease of use for it. It's a 12,000 GVWR, so it fits in that class three to four class range of vehicles. Which, when we look at that class three to five class range of vehicles, it's over 400,000 vehicles per year are sold in that that range. So this vehicle again was really developed to walk into the marketplace and dominate that. We. We do not have any competitors in this, uh, this class three vehicle, cab over vehicle. Um, it fits extremely well with our existing group of customers. 
you know, primarily we've been selling into the, um, you know, the municipal market, uh, into the municipal bus market, which are, uh, and if you look at that market space, that market, um, it, for us selling this vehicle into there, it fits into the exact same customer base that we have for our, for our trucks. We're also expanding out a dealer network uh, for these vehicles, um, which we consider uh, when we look at where we're going with this vehicle and, and putting a, a dealer network um, across uh, across North America for this uh, for this vehicle. We really see some accelerated growth coming forward. The Optimal EV partnership. So what we did is we partnered up with Optimal to uh, be the exclusive North American distributor for this uh, Optimal um, uh, v, uh, EV uh, E1 and S1 low floor shuttle. So this will be brand marketed under the VNC brand name. It fits with the existing group of um, dealer network we have, and we really see this vehicle as being a high volume uh, vehicle. Um, it's uh, the, the partnership uh, that we have, this vehicle will produce down in Elkhart, Indiana, which is really in the heart of uh, these small uh, transportation vehicles being built back, uh, being built down there. It's the first low four shuttle to come to, uh, come to market. So we have a first uh, advantage on first mover advantage there. When we signed in, uh, um, executed this, uh, this agreement with, uh, with Optimal, it come with a, a very large backlog of, um, of orders that were in the pipeline already. So we have access to over $30 million of backlog and we see a strong sales pipeline of about 600 million ahead of us on, on this vehicle. Um, and again, it fit extremely well uh, with the market that we're competing and we really wanna dominate that mid-size market. We look at a lot of our competitors in the bus manufacturing in, in North America, and they're really focused more on the larger vehicles, which are 40-foot and 60-foot uh, vehicles. So this vehicle really fits well with uh, where we want to uh, focus our, our energy going forward. This collaboration agreement that we have, we signed a collaboration agreement with the EAVX, and EAVX is the newest uh, business unit of the JD uh, Point Dexter uh, group. Um, they dominate the work truck market in uh, North America. Um, if we look at the JD uh, Point Dexter, in their, if uh, they estimate that in the U.S. they manufacture one out of every two. So 50% of the truck bodies that are manufactured, you see that on the very top uh, top right of that uh, um, vehicle, the, the black vehicle there, that's a, that's a van, um, walk-in, uh, roll-up door van. And they have 50% of that market space. They have 65%, two out of every three step vans uh, through their Morgan uh, division, um, so they dominate that uh, that walk-in van market. That walk-in van market, when you're looking at customers there, you can see a vehicle that uh, that there. That's a UPS style vehicle. Um, they're looking for electric chassis, and that's where when we look at our lineup of what we have. When I showed you some of the slides earlier, we have a class three, we have a class four vehicle, which is really just a, a, a an E450 converted, which fits. Um, that will be built, um, uh, converted down at Elkhart, Indiana. And then, of course, with our 5.6 bus chassis. That 5.6 bus chassis, we're designing that chassis to fit right underneath that UPS uh, vehicle that we see there, uh, body style, walk-in van body style. Uh, so we're working very closely with them to offer some, some chassis in, in the marketplace. And we think this is just, a, again, just a, uh, um, just a great... Uh, uh, collaboration between the two uh, group of companies. That walk-in van market alone is 40,000 vehicles per year are sold in the walk-in van. So 
So USA Assembly Facility, if anybody's been listening to some of our past uh, presentations here, we are uh, we're building a new uh, manufacturing facility uh, down in Washington State. It's actually in the Ferndale area. We chose Washington State. Um, it's very close to our Canadian headquarters here. We have about a 30-minute drive to get down to where this new factory is being uh, produced. The factory is on a campus uh, just under, I think it's five acres or four point something acres that we have down there. Uh, the building is under um, under construction as we speak, and it should be the building itself should be completed here before the end of this year. Um, and then we just have to outfit it with the specialized uh, production equipment that we need to run the assembly lines uh, through the factory. Uh, we see ourselves being able to have a capacity of about a thousand buses a year. We will produce some uh, trucks down there as well. The truck uh, running the truck down a, a separate line. Uh, we could increase that truck business to you know, thousands of trucks uh, a year through that facility as well. We also have contract manufacturing capability of about 2,000 units a year. And then, of course, I talked earlier on the um, uh, on the Optimal uh, facility. Optimal has a, a manufacturing facility down in Elkhart, Indiana, that can do about six to 8,000 of the smaller uh, mid-sized vehicles for us down there. So we're really positioned really well for our, our growth. And this, this factory and this, uh, um, that we're putting in is really key part of our, of our uh, strategy to um, really dominate that mid-sized market in North America. So what we like to say is we're, we, we are really in the early stages of, uh, of organic growth. Uh, we have all the pieces in, in place really to drive our our growth um, for uh, this coming year and, and further. Um, we have a very strong uh, U.S. dealer network that we're working uh, with to uh, to ensure that we capture a lot of that business. Uh, we have we see funding in place that are at levels we've never seen in in the past. There's billions of dollars available for electric vehicles uh, in North America, both in, both in Canada and the U.S. Um, the U.S., on a lot of the funding opportunities that we have in the U.S., that, that's where the, the factory that we're putting in Washington State really comes into play. Uh, a lot of the funding, um, we have uh, FTA funding provides up to 80% of public transit uh, vehicles uh, uh, in the U.S., so again, that uh, that factory is a really key part of our of our um, uh, growth strategy. Our scalability, uh, I've stated, you know, we have a capacity of about a thousand uh, buses a year down in Washington State, plus uh, uh, thousands of trucks. We have contract manufacturing for 2,000 uh, units as well, and then of course on the on the smaller um, cutaway um, market. We have uh, six to eight thousand vehicle capability through our Elkhart, Indiana uh, facility. Uh, we are really on an explosive um, uh, growth. Uh, if we look at the capitalization on that explosive growth for the EV market, um, as I stated, it's just uh, we've never seen uh, the, the funding levels like we've seen uh, uh, available now. And for us, we think we've got the you know the the best vehicle at, at the right time um, to drive this uh, drive this growth. We also uh, see ourselves um, with reoccurring revenue with our past uh, uh, vehicles that we have in the marketplace. And as we transition into that uh, uh, EV market, we have um, we have reoccurring parts revenue that's growing on a on a quarter by quarter basis. We have a very strong management uh, group. Uh, really, when you look at uh, you know how are we going to get to where we need to, you need to have strong management. Of course, I've introduced myself. I'm one of the founders, CEO, and president uh, uh, of the uh, Vicinity Motor Corp. We have uh, you know strong. If you can look at the, uh, this slide here, you know Manuel Achadina, our chief operating officer, um, is extremely uh, well positioned. He's a 25-year veteran. Um, he worked with uh, BC Transit uh, um, for years. 
Uh, we're very happy to have him on our um, as our chief operating officer. Uh, um, you can walk through what we have. John McGorg, VP of uh, Corporate Development, uh, very strong uh, board. That's an active board. Uh, Joe Miller, very uh, strong global businessman. Um, Andrew Amasse has uh, uh, really built the um, El Dorado for bus group from uh, zero to about five hundred uh, million dollars a year. Uh, very active as well. Dan Buckle is uh, an extremely talented uh, CFO, has um, strong public um, uh, company experience, uh, and really, uh, really quite pleased to have him as well. So key takeaways, what I want to leave you with here is, you know, we are a leading supplier of uh, um, vehicle transportation manufacturer. Um, we're transitioning well from the uh, clean diesel products uh, into the EV. Over 70% of our revenue forecast for next year is electric vehicles. Um, we have a strong lineup. And, and we're very focused on that lineup. As I stated, you know, we really want to focus on that mid-size and below market, which I think we've got you know, just great vehicles. Um, you know, the vicinity lightning, we introduced it uh, here at, a, at the APTA, Pub, uh, American Public Transportation um, Association here a couple of weeks ago down in Florida. Same with our VMC truck. We've got strong uh, sales uh, we're working on on the truck. These vehicles aren't uh, a PowerPoint uh, launch. These are real vehicles. Uh, uh, we've driven them, tested them, and, and they're, they're ready for market. We've got some very strong uh, collaboration agreements in place, one with the, uh, the Point Dexter group. Uh, we think our, uh, we feel our electric um, chassis is going to fit well with their body building. Uh, we have strong growth revenues for next year, 140 million with 10 million of EBITDA. So I'm going to walk into the uh, Q&A now. Um, if anybody has any, uh, when we walk past this, if anybody has any uh, other questions, you can just reach out to our uh, investor relation firm. Uh, BMC at uh, mcgroup.us. Thank you. Thank you. Now, if anybody has any questions, please. Uh, Please uh, present them. Okay, first question. Can you please say how many classic buses you currently have on order? Also, are you in a position of on receipt of orders um, to be already delivering uh, optimal to EV customers? Yes, we are. We have about 95 classic vehicles on order as we speak that will be uh, delivered next year. Um, they're currently in our, in our order book. Um, the optimal vehicles, we have about a $30 million backlog of orders in the, in the optimal orders that we'll be building out starting delivery here in, uh, in Q1. We also have a very uh, strong uh, order book for the um, for the chassis, just the E1 chassis as well. Um, we have uh, one large group that's got a, a considerably large order in uh, for chassis conversions uh, through the through the optimal uh, factory as well. Hope that answers those questions. Okay, well, that'll end the, uh, the session. I thank you very much uh, for watching this presentation this morning. If you have any further questions, just please reach out. Thank you so much.
That concludes today's presentation and thank you for tuning in.